A Song That Outlives Time. This is a recording of a story I'm going to publish for, that I'm going to publish. It's only going to be a short story and it is mainly inspired in the beginning by the piano, by Piano Man by Billy Joel. And not just that song, but all the songs he ever wrote and, and the stories he told. Not also that, but all the right, all the authors, past and present, who've helped me along the way. As I said in the title, it's a, called A Song That Outlives Time by Unally Volkama. Dedication to Billy Joel and all the other piano men, past and present. 1932, Los Angeles. Desperate times call for desperate measures, as they say. And he knew that there wasn't any other choice in his life. His well-worn shoes slapped against the muddy pavement, almost making him fall. If it weren't for him quickly grasping the secret door. He looked around shamefaced, hoping no one saw that. Or if they did, he hoped that it wasn't, sus that it wasn't suspicious. He hated working here with these people, but really had no other choice. Besides, he couldn't leave that Steinway, that gorgeous, well-built instrument played by keys connected to strings in the back. His onyx coloring shone in the moonlight on a clear night. Those elegant keys produced the most haunting sounds he'd ever heard. Spoke to people without words and comforted the broken souls he saw every night before the moonshine took them. How long would his luck last until it all ran out? Sighing, he slowly opened the door and slid in, making sure that none of the drunks or gangs saw him as the shadows and smoke hid him from view until reaching that gorgeous black Steinway piano in the center stage and sat down on the stool. Out of the corner of your eye, he spot one of the main bosses of the area. Last time he was here, he asked for some jazz music, but it had been closing time and you had to kindly refuse the offer. Taking the old tip jar from beneath your coat out, you place it on the end near the keys. It was a crappy job, but it paid well on a good night, so there was no other option. Your hands, his hands tr trickle up and down from low to high and back again, hitting the right notes from weeks of practice. A gruff cough caused by thousands of Cigar smoke snapped him out of a daze. A pudgy man stands up over him. A pudgy man stood over him with a cigar in his mouth, trying to outmask the reek of alcohol on his skin that seemed deep rooted into it. And his, eye, and his small eyes shone in the dark with anger that usually followed the addicts wherever they went. Most of the time, though, mob members were survivors of the Great War, or underlings of a hardened man, man who didn't care if you were scum under, the, under their boots. Hey, piano brat! He sputters in a deep, throated snarl as he pulls out his handgun and messily twirls it in the air, clearly not 
quit caring if he shot anyone. Ain't you gonna apologize for what happened last night? You st- the pianist rolls his eyes as he avoids looking at the bar at him. Again, while inspecting the tip jar. One dollar forty-eight. That plus the money the bartender gave him at the end of the week would pay enough for some food, but not enough to pay back his house. Childhood home. But sustainable. Apologize? To a drunk like you? A sneer crosses his face at, at, as, as he notices the boss getting agitated by the ra- rising flame in his eyes as, you conti- as, he continu- as the pianist continues. So what if I don't play that devil's music? Can't you, get, can't you go to the theaters? You take pleasure in watching the volcano blow up as you return to the piano and play for a few minutes for, before a loud bang breaks the concentration. Something wet flows onto the keys, accompanied by excruciating pain. You see the pennies from the tip jar scattered on the black and white parts as red liquid oozes over them. You shiver in shock as the realization hits you. Blood. This was blood. Not just that, but the jar had been clearly blown to pieces, which caused the glass to cut deep into your hands. Throbbing pain overwhelmed you, causing an almost breakdown. But you quickly swallow the, the instinct down. You turn your head back to the keys, hands back, head back to the keys, and try to play one of your personal favorites. But it turned out to be a futile effort. That blasted asshole shot the jar without any thought in that small brain of his. What can I do? What can I do? God, what, when can I fix this? It, that was the last thing you would et, you, you would see and sink for many decades. As he tried to fix the mistake, he heard another bang before everything went black. That's the that's just a small snippet of the full story which will be broken up in three four parts and will be ended will be ended soon hope it's okay